Hey, I'm Super Senpai. Today, we're going to be showing you guys how to catch bugs in Animal Crossing New Horizon that are rarer or difficult to catch. But you guys are probably guessing. You probably time traveled. Yes. So I'm hunting bugs in July and August, so it's a little bit ahead of the schedule. And if you guys are playing correctly or uh, traditionally, uh, watch this video again in July and August. Or if you guys are watching this in the future or past, whatever, um, this is specifically for August and July's bugs. So there's three main rare beetles. The first one is Gold Stag, Horned Hercules, and Giraffe Stag. So those three were the ones that had the most difficulty catching. And it's because their sensitivities are cranked up a notch to the point where it's just, you have to be really smart to capture them. Beetles like uh, this, this one, the C one, uh, the Horned Atlas, the Horned Elephant, those ones are really easy to capture. They make a lot of money, so it's great. If you're playing at 11 p.m., the Scare Up Beetle, and the giant stag, giant stag helps out a lot um, for you to make a lot of money because they're worth about 10,000 bells. The only issue is it kind of lowers down your spawn rate for the other beetles. So I will recommend to play around probably 8 to 10 p.m. if you're going for the rarer ones. Um, but if you're trying to make money and get the rare ones at the same time, play past 11 p.m. And yeah, those two, I wouldn't worry too much at 11 p.m. They're very easy to capture too. It will just, those three main ones I just talked about, those were the hardest ones. It took me hours to capture. So I'm showing you guys how to make a beetle spawning island. It's literally just a tarantula spawning or scorpion spawning island except uh, you have palm trees still left for you to capture those. After that, I'll show you guys how to guarantee yourself to spawn them and guarantee yourself to capture these bugs without scaring them off. Alright, so to begin this, you will need your Nook Miles tickets. So all you have to do is to go to your ATM and... What the f***? I didn't know you could spawn there. Okay, anyways, once you get your ticket, you can fly off. Any island can work, but preferably a smaller island that's flat. Any island can work, just preferably a smaller island that's flat. It just helps you when you run around, you can scare off the bugs you don't want. And an island that doesn't have water on the second floor, so no waterfalls, that helps out a lot more just for spawning reasons for bugs. If you see the bamboo island, for example, that's perfect too. But this island I'm showing you is a perfect island, just a very small island, you can go around, it's perfect. So, step one, you chop down every tree except palm trees. This prevents any bugs from spawning from the trees. And you can stop at the step where you cut them down so you can catch bugs that only spawn on uh, stumps. This is a great way to spawn them. This is how I got some of the rarer bugs on those stumps to get them melee. And after that, I just dig out those trees and moved on. And if you have higher elevation, you use the wood you cut down and make it into a ladder. And then that allows you to just go up and down so you don't have to bring a ladder, you can just leave the ladder there because it costs you nothing. And wasps, you'll get one no matter what in the island, so just get it, get it over with. Step two, you eat four fruit and you destroy all the rock. If it's raining, you reduce the chance of having snail spawn. I don't know if any other bugs respond to that, I just like to get rid of the rock as fast as I can so I can just run around. Step three, you pluck every flower. I know people say that you're supposed to dig out the flowers and dig out the weeds. No, I noticed that as long as you pluck the flowers, no butterflies will spawn and no uh, beetles will spawn, any bugs that are going to be on the floor, they were always going to be there. Um, I know you see a butterfly on screen, but like, don't worry, the butterfly disappears after. <laughs> Step 4, you dig out all the stumps. So if you didn't do that before, just dig out all the stumps now. So you only need guarantee palm spawning and land spawning. Now, if I were you, don't bury the hole back in, just because it helps you create these hazards for scorpions. So if the scorpion sees you, you can run around the circle, so you have some time to turn around and capture them. So this creates those hazards against them. Now make sure you get rid of bugs while you do this routine. So you have to check the wires to make sure you get rid of the wire bugs or the roaches on land. That's why if you have wire falls, it kind of makes it difficult to use the ladder going up and down just to get all of the bugs. But in generally, it's not too bad. Also, just bring your fishing rod. Um, it does get really boring. So if you see a shark, because around this time of the year, uh, sharks do spawn. So just put your own fishing rod and go for it. That wasn't a shark. But here's the problem. The three rare bugs are very sensitive from what I've experienced. So any slight movement will scare them off. And it's what you do to capture them, and it's very simple. You look very close to the beetle, and you hold A. Now you only move if the beetle moves. If the beetle stops moving, you don't move. So typically, there's two ways beetles can move. The first way is if it's a larger beetle, uh, if they're horned for example, they would typically move their body up and down. So you can probably see how they're moving and if they stop moving, you stop moving. Um, the other ones are the sags and they use their jaws. If the jaws are expanding and closing, that's when you can move. If they stop moving, then you stop moving. But the biggest important part is their head tilts. If their head tilts back, that means they're going to jump. You just need to make sure if their head tilts, you stop moving, your head goes back in, then you start moving again. And it's just that simple. I 
took me about like two hours to figure this out from internet research and literally that's it. And if you're really nervous about doing this because you're like, I don't know how fast I'm moving, just move at the speed the bug's moving. So the bug's moving slowly, you move slowly. And the bug moves really slow, you move really slow. And then stops, stops. And that's it. And when you capture the bug, a good distance of one to two flowers will be good enough distance for you for you to throw the net and capture the bug. A lot of practice does help. So capture the regular bugs, the Miyamas or the sod bugs. Just take your time to see how they behave in the exact same way as rare beetles do. And that's it. Oh yeah, scorpions spawn um, once in a while. So just be ready for that. Yeah, I got you. Also, gold stag is kind of weird. Like. I honestly can't tell the difference between that and a rainbow stag. Like, if you look at it because it's, it's nighttime, you can't see the colors that well. I just captured every single rainbow stag, and once in a while, it'll be a golden stag. Like, even looking at these images, like, I can't really tell. Maybe that black spot, but even then, that's way too hard to see when you're trying to capture the bug. Oh my god, so it took me 30 minutes to get this exact footage. So I'm going to take my shot slowly, take my time. Why is there a f***ing skill next to me? It's almost gonna land on me. I just, I just need a jump. Go! All right, I'm gonna kill every mosquito in this game now. Well, here's a follow proof just to prove that I did capture it because I don't want you guys to think I didn't. Um, but I'm too lazy to actually get the real footage, so whatever. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope this video was useful for you guys. And if it was, just like, comment, and tell me if you guys want to see more videos like this. Uh, I played about 300 plus hours of Animal Crossing, so I know the in and outs of there, so I can give you guys some great tips for you guys for you guys to have the best Animal Crossing experience out there. And if you like this video, you should watch my Animal Crossing first time experience. That that is hilarious. It has all my stories about what happened in my first two weeks of Animal Crossing. And hopefully if you guys like it, we can keep making more videos like this. So thanks a lot. And I'll see you guys in my next video.